My name is Gene Scalati, and I wrote a book entitled Dark Stars and Antimatter, but 40 years of loving, leaving, and making up with the music of the Grateful Dead. Well, first of all, it's the greatest writing assignment I ever got. Somebody would come to me and say, we just want you to write about music and, and whatever you want. And I, you know, most of the time you pitch articles and you accept an assignment from somebody. And uh, for someone to offer you that, it's like heaven, you know. I perceive that my take on the Grateful Dead is different from the usual, I love them, I can't stand the fuck up, I die. you know, all that stuff. And it's usually down that corridor. And um, I was there in the very beginning and they just, it's, it's, you know, like all that San Francisco stuff, it's just so great to have been there. And then after a while, I drifted away and I heard this and it came back. And so anyway, I just thought I, I had kind of a different take on it and I tried to weave it in with personal stuff. I got to meet Jerry once. It was so nice that the guy was so generous, not only generous, but probably in being generous and inviting us to a session that we all went to, us and our girlfriends and all these people. He, probably wasn't even the most efficient, productive thing for him and his band who were in the middle of cutting vocals for American Beauty. It's like these 12 people from Napa Valley come down and sit around and smoke dope with us and listen. It's like, okay, but he did that. And it's just a great thing, you know, really nice. By the time I, I lost interest in the dead, it was probably the early 70s because I was part of a group of rock critic writer guys who were sort of rediscovering the old stuff and the classic stuff and the pop stuff and psychedelic things by that time were stretching out and it just, it was a focus that was lost and we didn't care that much anymore. And we, were, we liked 50s and 60s stuff and, and garage stuff. And then that sort of led to punk rock what happened in the 70s and 80s and that was just everything. For one thing, their earliest, the first album is basically garage rock and it's one that most people who consider themselves deadheads really abhor and that Jerry thought was too fast and all this stuff. There are some people like me, in my case partly because I was there and saw it live and saw it being built, that's the best for me. And that music is fast and short for the most part, like the Standells or the Electric Prunes who were doing the same thing at the same time and that's the kind of stuff that I like. Um, I don't think I've ever fallen out of love either with things like Dark Star, the live dead thing, and all, that whole transition and sweep of the 11 and St. Stephen and Dark Star, which I also saw a lot of those shows live too. Um, I was always able to listen to that. I got drawn back to the dead, I suppose, a couple things, and I don't really recall which one was first, but Touch of Grey just knocked me down, um, partly because its message uh, with, you know, I will survive, really hit somebody who was now in his 40s and, and the gray hair is coming, you know, so I get it. I get this. And it too is a very generous spirit that's in that song. That's Jerry's singing and, and it's the lyrics and stuff. And the other thing that just really sentimentally knocked me down was this Jerry song from a solo album called Mission in the Rain. And that just connected so much to the San Francisco that I knew that my folks knew. It's just like, man, I mean, he nailed that too. He nailed that neighborhood and, and that time and all that. And uh, so there was that, you know, and I've always liked the early classic stuff because that's what I lived with and saw, you know, from 66 to, I don't know, 72 or whatever that was. And the earliest stuff sort of beats everything to me, but um, there I've found points of connection with them in different places, you know. Somebody said some line about, I saw a, a Cadillac with a deadhead cigarette. It's like, oh man, that's, that, that's such a, a fucking ridiculous thing that can't be reconciled. I'm sure it can be reconciled. I mean, here we are 40 years later. I'm sure there's like guys who are vice presidents of companies who are deadheads because it refutes all that stuff like, you know, this red voter doesn't vote for this blue state policy, all that stuff. I, I love it when that stuff gets knocked on its ass. I don't know if that's the thesis underneath my book. I think that's just sort of my personal take on it. I think I'm someone whose attitude towards them, since it changed, goes from love to active dislike to boredom to back to really engaging engagement. So yeah, maybe I'm in a casebook example of one of those people who doesn't fit into all the, the uh, lines. I think it was Lenny Bruce said something like, um, there's nothing sadder than an old hipster, an aging hipster. And the notion was, the aging hipster is a guy who just clings to the obscure Mingus record or something while everybody else has moved on. I think there's nothing cooler than an aging hipster, a guy who picked it up in and stays with it. And, and over the years, that thing still provides some sustenance for him. And to me, uh, good, grateful, dead stuff that I like is like that. There's never been a time when I couldn't listen to it, you know. The dead were just so tremendous. To see those f fast, powerful songs like Cream Puff War and... Uh, and writer and that kind of stuff. I would go to 
uh, the Fillmore in particular early. I was going to college in San Francisco, and I, after there weren't many people dancing anymore, they had like about three or four rows of chairs right in front of the Fillmore, which is kind of a low stage. And I'd get there early enough to sit in the first row, and you know, and balloons bouncing around, and and uh, light show, show and stuff, and just be that close and see them. It's great. And I also, as I said in the piece, which I don't know what this says about me, but because my cousin uh, later became a kind of heavy drug user for a while, and it was kind of a tragedy within our family. I thought that I'm not going to do anything, and that'll set an example for my, my cousin. Most of the time when I saw The Grateful Dead, I was straight, which refutes also what most deadheads say. So as I said in the piece, either you got to take my word for it, or I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, because most people, if you say you saw them early on and you liked them, let's say, well, of course you were stoned. But I wasn't stoned, and they were still great. So sue me, you know.